This is AEDT 1120U, Foundations of Digital Teaching and Learning Technologies. The title of this video clip is Redefinition of Learning, Higher Order Thinking. The analysis questions for this video clip are as follows. Define each of the terms in the Bloom's Taxonomy Diagram. Identify the characteristics of higher order thinking, those that are in the bold section, compared to the lower order thinking skills. Number two, what does researcher Anne Helsding mean when she says that higher order thinking skills are domain specific or that they are non-transferable? Number three, according to Lipman and Garrison et al., what is the relationship between the development of higher order thinking and a community of inquiry? And number four, how does cognitive presence relate to higher order thinking? Traditional education tends to emphasize thinking patterns that are considered to be lower on Bloom's taxonomy for a variety of reasons, including they are easier to assess, they are easier to assign to learners as they focus on content issues, and they are common to some extent to all in the class, i.e. they become the lowest part of the lowest common denominator when the class members are addressed as a group, which happens frequently. By the way, take a look at what the categories really represent. For example, understand is closer to comprehend than it is to deep understanding. The epistemological order is primarily concerned with assigning the lower order thinking patterns or skills to the computer, which can do these easier and quicker so that human learners can develop the higher order thinking skills and patterns to a higher degree. Higher order thinking skills or HOTS are domain specific or situated and are consequently not transferable. I can test the final claim in this video clip in that I do not think that they are teachable either. Take a look at the video clip that uh, the link is shown on the slide and it will be available inside Blackboard. The quotes on this page are on the slide are taken from Garrison, Anderson and Archer, 2000. Quote, Lipman, 1999, notes the importance of community in higher order thinking. He sees a community of inquiry as a valuable, if not necessary, context for an educational experience if critical thinking is to be facilitated and deep learning is to be an outcome. Lipman describes the characteristics of a community of inquiry in terms of questioning, reasoning, connecting, deliberating, challenging, and developing problem-solving skills or techniques. Cons consistent with this, Ramsden in 1988 argues that the opportunity to negotiate meaning, diagnose misconceptions, and challenge accepted beliefs as in the community of inquiry described by Lippmann is essential for deep and meaningful educational experiences. Our model of online pedagogy in the graduate program, the MED and MA programs at UOIT, the model is based on a community of inquiry approach to learning as outlined by Garrison, Anderson, and Archer in their paper in 2000. The model suggests that deep and meaningful learning within the program occurs at the intersection of two spheres, the social presence and the cognitive presence immersed within a digital space. Presence is simply understood to be the availability for interaction. Digital space then is defined or described as um, it providing systems, structures, and processes that facilitate ubiquitous learning. The digital space also provides technological support and affordances for the development of tools and environments that enhance critical thinking, higher order learning, and diverse communications. The digital space describes a context of a completely online, using synchronous as well as asynchronous digital tools program in that all tech interactions with students in a formal course setting will occur within the space to ensure equity of access and experience to all students, regardless of geographic or temporal location. In graduate assist assistantship or supervision contexts, interactions may occur online or face-to-face -face as mutually agreed by students and professors. Cognitive presence promotes the development of a reflective practice in critical thinking. A cognitive presence encourages students to approach problems creatively and strategically actively seek out sources of information, identify and address bias, prejudice, and privilege, manage, analyze, and synthesize large quantities of information, and formulate and defend personal views and positions. That's primarily taken from Anderson in 2007. 
Social presence fosters the establishment and ma maintenance of a collegial, collaborative, and supportive environment in which students may freely and safely exchange and share their beliefs, views, and opinions. Collaborative learning, then, occurs in an environment in which the cognitive presence, social presence, and digital space intersect, an environment in which members of a community of inquiry construct meaning through sustained communication, again borrowed from 2000, uh, Anderson 2007. The theory slide in this particular case is a reference to Garrison, Anderson, and Archer 2000 um, and one critical thinking cognitive presence and computer conferencing in distance education found in the American Journal of Distance Education 15.1. The synthesis questions for this video clip are as follows. Number one, why are higher order thinking skills or HOTS of primary importance to the epistemological order? Number two, why is the domain specificity of HOTS important to PBL? Number three, has a community of inquiry been established in this course? And are HOTS being developed? Why or why not? And number four, what is the relationship between the online pedagogical model shown previously within this video clip and the epistemological order? And that brings us to the end of this video clip.